let's look at graphing transformations. So <clears throat> the first thing you want to do whenever you have a function here that you need to graph is you want to identify the basic function. Now you can see clearly by these two lines that the basic function here is absolute value of x. So we're going to have absolute value of x. And now I'm going to go ahead and graph absolute value of x here in blue. So remember, absolute value just makes this, the shape of a v because it's the distance from zero. So even if it's negative one, the absolute value is one. And so your graph is going to look like this. And then we have the other side here. Okay, so here's our basic function. Now you always want to graph that first, and now you're going to graph the transformation. But let's find out what's happening in the transformation. So we've got a number of things going on here. Um, the first thing you want to do is identify what's happening inside the parentheses, or in this case, inside of the absolute value. So a plus 2 actually means the opposite direction. Anything that's inside of absolute value or parentheses or a square root is going to be the opposite direction. So this is going to be a horizontal. So that's a horizontal shift left of 2. So I know that I'm going to go to the left 2. Now I also notice that I have this negative, I have a 3 here and another 3 here. So let's identify, let's actually put this plus 3 here first because that's the other shift. So that is a vertical shift up of 2. The plus 2 means that it goes up, or sorry, a vertical shift up of 3. So the plus 3 means that it goes up 3. Okay, next part. We have the negative is a vertical reflection. So we're going to write that. That just means that we're going to flip the function upside down. Uh, and then we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. And we say that because it's multiplied. And that's why you say by a factor of 3, because you would multiply <clears throat> the um, y values by 3. But in this case, you're also um, flipping it. Now, how do we graph this? Well, we're looking 2 to the left, and then we're going to go up 3. So 2 to the left and up 3 is going to actually put my new vertex, because the vertex is at 0, 0 in the initial function, it's going to be right here. Now, instead of going down 1 and over 1 and down 1 in this direction, because we have to go down, with the 3, we're going to stretch it. So that means we're going to go down 3 and over 1. If it was 2, you would go down 2 and over 1. But in this case, we're going to go down 3 and over 1. You can do this one more time, down 3 and over 1, down 3 and over 1. And now you have enough that you can draw your transformation or your transform function. So have my transformation in green, I have my original, and I've listed all of my transformations as well. Okay, next problem. So let's look at another one here, and now in this case we have a parent function that is x squared. So x squared, let's go ahead and graph that original function. x squared is going to look like this, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, and negative 1 squared is 1, negative 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to go ahead and graph the original here. goes through 0, comma 0. And now we can look at the transformations on our f of x function here. So the first thing is to deal with what's inside. So we're going to say horizontal shift right. Remember, it's always the opposite direction because it's really like x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals 2. So horizontal shift to the right of 2. Okay, after that we have a vertical shift down now because <coughs> we have a minus sign. So we have a vertical shift down 3. All right, and then the final thing, in this case we don't have a reflection, but we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. 
Okay, so the combination of all these things, right, two, down, three. Well, I can just go ahead and put my new vertex. I know it's going to be to the right, two, down, three is going to be right here. Now, since it's a vertical stretch by a factor of two, you can just think about, you know, if you took this value here, you can input the next value over. Like, if I input uh, positive three, you can think about that would be three minus two is one squared. Two minus three will give me negative one. Now, another way to think about that is just instead of going up one and over one like you do here, you can go up two and over one because of the vertical stretch. And then I can just draw the rest of my curve. I'm not worried about finding all the other points. I just want to show that this one goes up at a faster rate. And if you notice, it looks like it's stretched vertically in our new function, our transform function in green. So now we're done with this.